Hey everybody, my name is Erin Atkinson and I'm here today with Jeremy Ward from Ward Realty Services. He is the broker owner of the company. Um, we just wanted to get on here and talk about, uh, you know, like, you know, what the market trends are currently, like where we you know, forecast them going and, you know, what is the best thing for you to do in, in the real estate market. So I'm going to let him take over and how do you think the, the market is right now? Thanks for having me on today, Erin. Um, the market has been crazy, as we all know, over the last two or three years. Uh, we have suffered with low inventory, but we've been blessed with really low interest rates, which is, you know, part of the, the problem, right? We've got such great rates. Everybody's jumping in. The inventory is being absorbed very quickly. Uh, it's not a fact that we don't have inventory. It's just coming on the market and, and going to so status real quick. So a lot of time, a lot of people has been asking me like, when's the best time to sell my house, Jeremy? Like, when is it you know, the best time? When are we gonna be at the top? Um, there's a couple things going into play right now. <clears throat> I don't think we're at the top. Uh, I don't see any like going up and then crashing or nothing like that. We're, we're kind of coming into a more of a balanced market right now, Aaron. Uh, we've got a couple things that are, are playing into that. Uh, the market uh, is still really a seller's market. We have like less than a month's inventory still, which is about, I think last time I checked, we were between 550 and 600 homes. Well, that that's actually up from December when it was like 350 to 400 homes. I've been saying since October last year that first of the year, we're gonna have a little bit of a correction. Interest rates are gonna start to come up. Uh, inventory still going to be start coming to the market and so far that's what we've seen but it is going to be more of a healthy market for buyers and sellers so the buyers out there are still getting really good rates more inventory is coming on the market so they have more choices for the sellers you've got more competition coming to the market and it's starting to kind of level out we're not seeing the increases that we had seen in the past uh, you know, there was going up 20 and 30%. Now we're going to see more like a seven to maybe 15% in our area uh, of increase. So really right now is the best time to buy and sell. It's, it's, it's just, we're at a hinge point in the market where, you know, there's going to be a little bit more inventory for the buyers, which helps the sellers out too, because when they sell their home, obviously they need inventory when they come into the buying spot. So I think, like if I was a seller right now, I would look at it as a great time to sell. I'm going to have less competition. I got uh, tons of buyers out there and you know, I can still go find a house once I sell mine. So with the inventory coming to the market, do you find that there's a lot more new construction or resales? Right now, lead, new construction is leading the sales. Uh, there is a lot of resale, but it's based on how many homes are being built, obviously providing more inventory. So those guys feel comfortable with selling their house and maybe buying a new construction home. New construction right now is probably your best bet uh, if you're looking to buy something with the rates the way they are. You know, we've got 100% financing on a lot of these new constructions. Uh, you just get an opportunity to buy a maintenance-free home that you're not gonna have to worry about for the next 10 years. You kind of know when, when it's gonna be ready. Uh, if you make an offer on a house, you know that you have a, you know, a certain close date. And when you get closer to the end of that, you know, you can always put your home on the market or you can sell it right before you close on your new one. So yeah, the new construction has been uh, great. It's been a big part of our inventory. I know that with our opinions, a big majority of it is new construction right now. Now, if somebody were to go in the new construction route, um, are you seeing that it's taking a lot more time for the homes to be built or is it starting to, or, or time to start getting short? Well, you know, last, the last couple of years we had COVID is something that we had never experienced before as builders and agents. And it really threw us for a loop when it comes to deadlines and being able to get some materials on time and to be able to finish on time. We went from being able to build spec homes in three to four months to taking six months to a year, an average of about eight, nine months. Now moving forward into 2022, I think the builders have reacted to that. They've done a little bit more upfront planning we're actually putting the houses, you know, uh, getting them built to the stage of at least having the cabinets of flooring in before we even list them. That way, the, the clients don't have to sit there and worry about, you know, when the home's going to be ready. You know, uh, when when should I put my house for sale? Well, we're getting these things closer to the finish line before we list them. And there's several factors: is 
you know, we want to make sure that we've got all the materials that we need. Everything's on order. We've received it. We know what the pricing is going to be because in the past few years, we may uh, bid a house. And by the time we get done with it, the materials have jumped 20 and 30 percent. And now we're having to go back to a client saying, look, your two hundred thousand dollar house is now two hundred thirty thousand. Nobody wants to, to, to get that message right. So I think the builders have done a good job. They basically said, let's get them pretty well built and, and make sure that we've got all the inventory on hand and that we can give these clients a solid price on their new construction home. So I know Aaron, you've got several and Jeff, and that was kind of what we did with it was yeah. we waited till they got almost done before he was able to list them. Yeah. It just seems like a lot less stress and a lot more certainty in the deal for, the, for your right. clients. Yeah, I know um, a lot of buyers really appreciated knowing the timelines and us waiting that long, you know, just to you know, be able to make sure that they know how to time, you know, their move. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, and then um, the going back to like the inventory and you know now is a good time to sell. How long do you think uh, that it is still going to be a seller's market? Uh, I think we'll be on a seller's market for another you know year, year and a half, maybe two years. It's just simple supply and demand. We've got, you know, the, the baby boomers are still out there in our population. That's a huge population. And the millennials are the largest population that we've ever seen in the United States. And all these guys are trying to get into homes. And, you know, one of the big factors is we didn't build um, a, a, a huge number of homes in the last 10 years. You know, when, when the recession happened, building pretty much come to a stop. And But people were still having kids. People were getting married, graduating from college. All the short sales and the foreclosures have been, you know, bought up. Uh, they may be, you know, second homes. They may be rental homes, that sort of thing. But basically, we're just short homes. And, and that's just a simple supply and demand that I believe will be in a seller's market for another probably two years. Okay. And you brought up a good um, topic on foreclosures. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are wanting to flip homes like these days. And do you see a lot of foreclosures come into the market? in the next year, year and a half? No, I used to list a lot of uh, foreclosures and had several asset managers I stay in touch with, you know, and I've got people across the country I talk to as well. And there's just not a pipeline for foreclosures right now. So we did have, you know, a lot of people were expecting after COVID and after this mediation where the government stepped in and said, hey, you don't have to make payments for the next six months, but at the, at the end of six months, you got to get us caught up, you know, with the lenders. And everybody's like, well, that's not going to be able to happen. You know, a lot of people are going to lose homes. And I have listed a few homes that were in that situation. But here's the thing. The homes never make it to the auction block. They never make it to the sheriff's sale because there's so much equity in the homes right now that I, and rather than lose the home, they just put it on the market and they get top dollar for it. And then they restructure and buy something, maybe downsize. So we, we're not seeing, you know, I'm calling on asset managers and seeing if they have anything in their pipeline and they just really don't. There are going to be some foreclosures you'll see through, you know, Fannie Mae and these big companies that's taken in millions of loans. So there is going to be that percentage, but it's nothing like what we've seen in 08. You know, 08 was a, was a market where uh, we were really lending money out to people that weren't solid. It wasn't the, the buyer's fault. They, they qualified for the, the, the system and the loan that they were given. And then, you know, things slowed down. But I can tell you, Aaron, as you know, when a lender sits down with you as a buyer, like they are taking all your information. You're going to have to be on your job for a few years. You're going to have to have all these things. They're going to go back through it again. And, you know, we always have like that right before closing, they, they miss something. They got to check it, right? So these buyers have been screened so strong, like it's crazy to get a loan. I, I dread it. I buy uh, houses for investments too. And, uh, you know, I'm, 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 my information is on the on the bank's desk at all times. Um, as a you know, buying you know, uh, I build new homes and, and all kinds of things. But I, they still, you know, they still ask me a lot of questions that they probably didn't ask you know, prior to 08. So they learned a lot. I've talked to the banks. I was speaking with the president of Bank of America and he said, we learned a lot from the last crash. We're not going to do that again. And the way we handle it is not just go foreclose on everybody again. Like they don't want to sit on that inventory. Yeah. So it just, again, the supply and demand, 
you know, Aaron, if I hear you're struggling as, as your neighbors say on a payment or something, I'm probably going to come to you and say, hey, my son's looking for a house. Why don't I just, you know, sell him your house? It never gets to foreclosure. Yeah. Good point. Um, yeah, I know, like I purchased a home back in July and you know, being self-employed, I had to have you know, two years of my tax returns. And plus, like right before closing, I had to show that I still had income coming in. So the requirements are so much different Terrible. than what they were. Like I know all you had to have was a 700 credit score and a bank account and you yeah. could get a home back in 2008. So yeah, um, yeah and, and we closed them in 15 days. Yeah. You know, they weren't underwrited to the point where they are now where it's taken 30 days. You know, they're, they're really doing their, their homework on the buyers and making sure it's a solid investment. And, you know, one of the things I think it just shows the, the, the increase in housing, you had a new construction home built, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from the time that you made your offer to the time you closed, the appraisal come in quite a bit higher than what you paid for it, right? Yes. So like even today, say if you were to lose, you know, lose your income source, you could turn around and sell that house for a profit, I would think. Yeah, and that's with new construction. And that one is even, wasn't really a thing back in 2005 and six. Like it was just, you know, everybody were buying houses, but the market wasn't going crazy in appreciation like it is now. Yeah. And the, the, the appreciation is driven by supply and demand and, and a low interest rate. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a different, it's a different game. I know myself, I keep, you know, a couple of years ago, I kept thinking I'm gonna stack up cash and wait for this foreclosure thing to hit. I don't see it happening. I, it just everybody I've talked to, all the expert I listen to, that there's no there's no cliff anywhere soon. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. taking the time out of your day today and you know share all your knowledge with everyone. As a broker and as you as an agent, you know, you guys, you probably don't have a lot more questions. And Aaron and I'd be glad to answer questions one on one. Uh, Aaron, won't you give them your information? All right, so you can reach me and you can call or text. My number is 502-709-0502. And um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, same, uh, my name is Jeremy Ward, 812-987-4048. <clears throat> you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, at Ward Realty. Uh, be glad to answer any questions. And also we can back it up with graphs and uh, you know, the numbers, uh, we got a lot of sources where we get our information. So be glad to share those with you. Sometimes the, it helps to have the actual numbers, just not just talking to a person in real estate, right? So I think the biggest issue that we're um, struggling with in our market as buyers and sellers is certainty. The buyers and sellers are just not certain right now on what they need to do. And I feel like Aaron, that's our job is to provide them some certainty provide them the best, uh, most up-to-date information that we can so they can make a, a really responsible, wise decision on what works best for them, whether it is holding off and save, saving cash to maybe there is a foreclosure wave in five, 10 years, who knows? Or maybe it's better to take advantage of a low interest rate and 100% financing right now and just kind of beat out the inflation, go ahead and get something bought before it becomes more expensive yeah. and get in a rate that's lower like they are now before they start to go up to five and six percent because when I bought my first house it was eight percent and that was supposedly a good rate. <laughs> I never imagined that I would be buying a home or refinancing at two and a half percent. So them days are kind of in the past I think. Uh, the, the, the government's going to have to raise interest rates to kind of hedge off this inflation and thank God Aaron real estate's the best hedge for inflation or the, to protect yourself from inflation. So. Anyway, I won't be so long-winded and I appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll see you soon. Bye.